Good morning and welcome to another video. As you can probably see, it's next to the Avon. A very sunny morning. It's about 8.15 now, something like that. AM, that is. And I've come down to this swim I fished a week or so ago in the wind and when there was a, plenty of colour in the river. We caught loads and loads of fish. One half reasonable chub. But I do fancy this swim for some better chub. Now, what's prompted me to come out this morning? A couple of things. Firstly, um, no school run today, being Saturday. Secondly, it's due to be windy, really, really windy from today onwards. So fishing the waggler, which is what I'm going to do today, is going to be out of the question for at least the next four or five days. And also, the river is clear. Now, I think quite possibly, it's, I'm not 100% at all, but quite possibly, with the river, last time we fished here, having about a foot of visibility, that might have been helping the small fish come up in the water. So I'm hoping perhaps we'll be able to target some bigger fish. Certainly without this wind, excuse me, I'll just keep pinging maggots in. From the looks of it, when we get the first big flood, that's going to go because all the roots are out of the water actually in the river. Um, so I just thought I'd make the most of it, so let's just jump out. I just thought I'd make the most of it whilst it was here. Anyway, very sunny, as you can see, so we'll get cracking. That side of the river should stay relatively dark. We'll have a couple of hours at it, just see what happens, see what we can catch. Now, gear-wise, another reason I wanted to come out, I'll just pick this up, because it was literally $29.99, is I've just picked up a, a power float from... Advanta, it's the Advanta 12 foot power float. It's two piece, which is nice. Now I thought this would be ideal for fishing swims like this, but we've got to fish fairly heavy. Because if we catch any decent chub or any chub at all, they're gonna try and get back, straight back into that tree. And I did want a power waggler float rod to use on the Y to do a bit of waggler fishing as well. So as I say, I bought this. Then these retail at £60, but it was on offer with £30 off. So, to be honest, too cheap not to buy. <laughs> Coupled that with Dower 125M close face reel. I'll put all the info and all the stuff I'm using down below. I'm going to stick a Drake Waggler on here and we'll get cracking. I'm going to feed this swim up for a few minutes first and then we'll have a cast. Right, we'll get, just get set up whilst we're spraying maggots in and, uh, yeah, we'll have a go. Hopefully we can tempt a few, uh, a few chub out from under that willow because I can't believe for a minute that there aren't any chub under that willow. <laughs> Probably foreshortening means you can't really see the extent of that willow, but just to put you in a picture, it's probably, front to back is probably eight metres, like lengthwise that way. And coming out from the bank, it's probably at least 10 metres. So it's a big old expanse of cover. And we're on a bit of a transitional place here between a sort of deeper, slower area to our left. Which, maybe about 12 foot deep, which is a place I do fish. And we sort of river bottlenecks here good morning mr kingfisher it bottlenecks here and goes up and becomes shallower so we're in a sort of bit of a transitional zone here with that lovely bit of cover anyway who knows who knows what we will do we caught lots of nice rud here last time i say chub about a pound and a half two pound loads and loads of chublets i was getting three four bites every run through last time we were here so Fingers crossed we can do okay today. Now, I would have probably been better off coming out later on. Because it's due to cloud over later and the, the wind's due to be fairly calm as well. However, I've got stuff to do. Been watching the Rugby World Cup as well, quite avidly. England are playing later and Ireland play South Africa which will be a cracking match or should be so as I say stuff to do I'm, I've come out this morning with a 
with the family sleep to be honest <laughs> I say this may be the last session get to do this for a while I have earmarked a predator session for this week my mate Mick will get down the stretch just above here we'll get down there and have a go hopefully catch some Xander perhaps some pike and uh, maybe some perch as well right that's enough waffle let's get cracking Last time we're here, I say the fish were like piranhas. It's going back a couple of videos. We'll keep this, uh, this bait going in. I've got about three pints of maggots with me, so we've got plenty for a couple of hours. Nothing yet. As I say, we're fishing about five foot deep. There's no way we're going to drag the bottom just yet. Ah, it's better. It's going out just lovely. yet to get our first bite. It's quite fresh this morning. I was going to say chilly. It's not chilly. But it's, uh, yeah, it's quite fresh. Well, as I say, nothing else of yet. There's only some little fish about. It's plenty topping. really want to catch little fish today it's not it's a target there we go that's a fish bit of a bend in the rod <gasps> it's off felt a bit perchy well whatever it was it dropped off well that's annoying but felt reasonable size but not massive probably was a perch got quite bony mouths haven't they Right, we've had a bite. Fab. As I say, it wasn't anything massive. I think it was a perch. But it's a start. problem as well with using power float rod it's not really going to cushion the bites of uh, and, uh, and striking into smaller fish so you do end up bumping stuff off like that because it's not sensitive in a tip at all this but that's why I got it <laughs> you know got it to be a power float very lucky with the dower that I use quite often 15 foot because it's a uh, tournament pro it's a jack of all trades really there we go oh this feels a half decent fish what's this could it be our first chub Going for the edge. Trouble perch, I'd say. It's just plodding around a bit. Doesn't feel particularly perchy. This is a reasonable fish, though. Cracking. I'd say it's not trudging for the edge or shooting for the edge like you'd expect with a chub. There's a chub. <coughs> That's a good start. That's what we're after. Cracking. It's a nice one as well. Well, that's a good start. We've been fishing about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. How's about that? <laughs> Wonderful. That's cracking. 
Maggots in the corner of the mouth. Well, not the easiest of places to use a keep net, but we can put them in with the landing net. That's cracking start. Absolutely wonderful. No monster, but exactly what I was hoping would happen here. Well, here's to a net full of them. Just a very gentle upstream breeze. Perfect. Let's just running through. Yes, very slowly. Trundling through. I'm sure we'll find a level as well which the fish don't want to come up further than. I can't imagine with this amount of clarity, it's probably four or five foot of visibility. I can't imagine that they're going to be right up in the water. It's a fish, but it's not very big. What we got? A roach or a rud? A roach. Now I'm figuring that that chub won't be down there on his own. Well, the last time we fished here, we did catch one chub, a bit smaller than that, and <laughs> nothing else. Nothing else size-wise, that is. Oh, that's gone a bit upstream. Never mind, I'll run through. The maggots are certainly ending up going that far upstream. Well, as hoped for, it's not going crazy like it was last time. Last time we were here, I was getting a bite about every 20 seconds. That was a bite. But this time, I'm not. Lovely run through here. I really hope this snag stays for a while. <laughs> Sort of place you can come and have a go for predators as well, isn't it? It's this little place, there'll be some predators hanging around. Just to explain the rig as well, I've just got most of the shot around the, there we go. I've got most of the shot around the, um, oi, oi, this has suddenly got bigger. Let me grab my pike, has it? I don't think so. Yeah, the bulk of the shot around the base of the float and I've got uh, just three number sixes down the line, just as droppers. Because I'm fishing fairly heavy. So rather than having number eight droppers, I've got number six droppers. This feels like another reasonable fish. Presumably it's a chub. It is. Come on, out there. He sort of felt very small at first and then <laughs> got bigger. <laughs> Well, this is cracking. Two chub in about 15, 20 minutes. How about that? Well, I'm loving this. This is fantastic. <laughs> You've certainly got a mouthful of maggots. Right, as I say, it's not ideal with this keep net set up like this. We can put them down into the water like that. The reason I'm using the keep net is, if I put these chub back, they're just going to go and spook all their mates, to be honest. So, it's a case of needs must, really. Well, this is cracking. Absolutely wonderful. Really enjoying this. It's nice to, to go somewhere and just think, that looks cracking. We came and had a go last time. Caught loads of small fish, and I'm sure the reason we weren't catching any bigger fish was because the small fish were just beating them to the bait. But like I said, it was about a foot of visibility that day. And I know from watching a 
<laughs> how my mind puts two and two together. I'm watching the Guru underwater videos. And on the days when the water was coloured, they had a lot of trouble with small carp. Oh, swans. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Oh, I'll feed it through the middle. They had a lot of trouble with, uh, with smaller carp on the days when the water was coloured. And I put sort of two and two together and thought, well, it's coloured here, and I, I caught loads and loads of small fish. I'm not going to say I got troubled by small fish, but I caught loads of small fish. I caught some lovely rut. Um, I'll link you up there if you want to go and have a look at that video. It's two videos ago. But I just thought, if we go back when it's clear, I'm wondering if the little fish will be a bit less on it, giving the bigger ones a bit of a chance. And it seems, after fishing for about 20 minutes now, it seems that, that is the case. Well, that's just the fact that it's the first thing in the morning. The chub are a bit happier to come out, who knows? Well, it's not first thing, but you take the point. This rod will be certainly good for doing a, doing a bit a bit of power float fishing and down the Y. It's disappeared. All right. Just as I mended the line, we've got another one on. Blimey, they're giving up. I think it's another chub. They're fighting a bit strange. A bit like they're half asleep, which is quite possible. I say we had a chilly night last night, it's a chilly morning. And now we may well be half asleep. Feels a reasonable fish again. It's just the occasional thump, thump. <laughs> it's not beasting me, fortunately, with all these snags around. What is it? I don't think it's a chub. It's not. It's a perch. It's one of these lovely perch from down here. I think it was a chub. Oh, that's a nice perch. Well, that's a lovely unexpected surprise. God, that's a proper one. Wow. Well, that's a lovely surprise. I've been planning on doing some perch fishing down here. That's a cracker. Absolutely fantastic. And once again, we'll, we'll put him in the net purely because perch are quite famous for <laughs> scaring their brethren as well, aren't they? We'll unhook him down here so he uh, doesn't get himself into any bother by falling. That's the sort of fish, when I'm fishing uh, bread flake, it's the sort of fish you miss, miss out on. So obviously they're not, they're not great fans of, uh, of bread, are they, perch? <laughs> oh, well, I was laying my pit earlier, thinking, shall I go, shall I not? It looks a bit sunny. I'm so glad I did. <laughs> so glad I did. I'm taking all these fish on double red. As I say, what we've got is, I've got the bulk of the shot around the float there, as you can see. Actually, an olivet and some shot. I've actually got a number four, about a foot down from the shot, uh, from the float, sorry. And I've got three number sixes down the line. And I've got a matrix hook length swivel. It's obviously got a bit of weight to it as well. Almost acting as another shot. Yeah, that's a wonderful surprise. I saw a flash of it down here and I thought, is that Xander? Because I've had Xander on the canal on maggots before. I thought Xander had caught it because it looked a bit grey. But no, Mr. Perch. Cracking. <laughs> Gosh, wind's picking up a little bit. <laughs> Just blowing that line. Well, I'm float that time as well. Keeping these maggots going in. I'm not filling it in. Just reminding them that there's some on the way. There we go. What's this? Doesn't feel massive. Blimey, we get some bites today. I say, it doesn't feel massive. Kiting in, it's probably a little chub, I would think. Is it a lifter? Just about. Probably should put the net under him, but we'll lift him. <laughs> We've got 
stout gear on. <laughs> Little job. <laughs> Oh, that one off. Didn't feel massive, but not like a reasonable fish. That's annoying. What I'm doing as well, for those of you relatively new to fishing, I'm having to give this waggler a bit of a whack to get it out there. What I'm doing is just feathering the line, just slowing the line down just before the float hits the water, just to straighten all the gear out so we don't get any tangles. Or we get less tangles anyway. I haven't had one yet, touch wood. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but as I say, I'm just checking the line and the, all the line shoots out forwards and you can see all the shot as they drop into the water. So I know I'm not tangled. Probably won't be able to see it on the camera. And unfortunately, when you fish on your own like I do most of the time you don't have anyone to do any filming for you now just to put you in the picture as well um, before I fished here let's say about a week ago I hadn't fished down here for blimey five years something like that this is my neighbour's stretch that's I fish on a fairly regular basis. My neighbour has the fishing rights to this stretch. I do fish up there a lot. The reason I don't tend to come down here is it's a lot more overgrown. But um, this was where the villagers put... Uh, I live in a village. Where the villagers decided to put in an otter halt and the otters moved in. And this along here, it was just, I, I nicknamed, nicknamed it Otter Alley. It was horrendous. It's like the killing fields. It's just, but I say, I just stopped fishing down here. It was just pointless. But, things have settled down a lot on the otter front. Certainly on the roads, you know. Yeah, the otter situation certainly calmed down a lot. Yeah, a lot less otters about than they used to be. My reading of the situation is when they first moved in, there was lots of carp in here. Well, not, not lots, but numbers of carp in here. There were barbel, especially below the weir. And they moved in with all these lovely, big, stupid fish around. Didn't know what an otter was. And they made hay, as they do. The chub seemed to fare a lot better than the, the carp and the barbel. Let's try that again. Um, yeah, the chub seemed to be a lot more wary of them. But, uh, as I say, that was probably five years ago. And there are certainly a lot less otters about now, but I think they've they've had all the big daft fish well there's catapult malfunction but we've had a bite uh, which I thought I'd miss but I haven't as usual uh, bumped it off as usual with catapults <laughs> they malfunction it doesn't seem to matter what mate you buy <laughs> it just seemed to break sooner rather than later this is a Matrix one. Last time I fished here, my other Matrix one broke, my lighter one. So I'm using a heavier one today, and that's just broken as well. So we'll we'll have to mend it. Right, let's try again to that rude interruption. I'm not sure how long the catapult's going to last <laughs> with my uh, partial mend. And that breeze is just starting to pick up a little bit. Going to make things a bit tricky. Well, like I say, it's an upstream breeze, so it's not the end of the world. It's about the best one we could hope for. Just keeps the line upstream from the float. Ah, keeps the line upstream from the float. That was a lovely bite, that was. 
Well, it seems a cracking peg, this. I'm going to have to I'm gonna sort it out properly, I think. Make somewhere flat to stand, because it's it's not very nice stood here. It's quite steep, and then literally where my keep net bank stick is going in the water, that's the edge of the river. And it's like, <laughs> you wouldn't want to go in. I think it's probably about waist deep where those reeds are. It gets deep very fast in here. Unmissable bites that you miss. It's weird as well, because maggots are not getting sucked. Very strange. That's nice. It's a, cut the foot off that tree. Alright, right, that's gone straight away. <laughs> Come back up. <laughs> Again. There we go. Oh, this is better fish. Ah, it was for a second. Felt a better fish for a second. <laughs> it's probably a chublet, I would think. Yeah, the chublet's getting in on the act now. <laughs> Never mind, we're catching. <laughs> dip, dip. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this feels better. A bit of a bend in the rod. Well, it looks like the chub is still about. Or is it another nice perch? Just trying to get in the edge. It's probably a chub. Come on, up you come. It is a little sort of half grown chub. Oh, it's great. It's still there. It's still there. Fab. I don't know, I'd bite off one for about, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes, something like that. Little, what do you call them, puppy chub? <laughs> Wow, that's gone right through. Which is very unusual. There we go, it's just sunk under. Oi, oi. Again, this was another better fish. Bending that rod. Bit of a bend. <laughs> but it is a power float, like I say. That <laughs> went a long way through. Unusually, another chub. Probably is. Although it's jagging about a lot, I wonder if it's a perch. It's very jag, 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 jag. Oh, he's gone. He's off. <laughs> Powered down then. Feels a reasonable fish. Blimey. Certainly, uh, putting a bend in this rod. What is it? Not even sleep yet. Oh, it's a stripey. I thought it felt a bit jag, jag, jag. God, that's another clonker. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well, gosh, once again, we'll have a look over the net. That's about that. As you look, beautiful, absolutely cracking fish. That's wonderful. So that felt a bit perchy, didn't I? That's cracking. Wow. God. That's a cracking fish. Once again, we'll stick him in there so he doesn't scare all his mates off. There's clearly some perch down there hoovering up these maggots. Well, boy, am I glad I got up. Because <laughs> I, I was umming and ahhing. <laughs> wow. No wonder there's less small fish about. There's perch like that in the swim. <laughs> that floats dipping, dipping and dipping and dipping. Some small grab that. I wonder if perhaps it's catching on some branches that are under the water. Well, I've been some lovely surprises, those perch. And once again, 
tells me a cracking place to come perch fishing, doesn't it? We'll definitely be down there and target them. Obviously happy to catch them today. You know, we're fishing maggots so that we can catch all species. I wasn't particularly thinking we'd catch perch. Oh, blimey, this is a better fish. I wasn't particularly thinking we'd catch perch through the water, though. Oh, this is, this is a better fish. This is trudging. Just trudging off upstream. Blimey, what a session. This one feels like it's got a bit of weight to it. It's just doing that plodding about. Whenever it is, I don't want to get it in too quickly. Just have all this foliage around the edge, but he's not doing a lot. Just feels quite weighty. I'd say it's plodding. What can it be? A bream or something? It's a bit like that. No, it's chub. Well, he's not done a lot, bizarrely. Uh, now he's going to wake up, of course, try and get under the keep net. <sighs> try and get under my feet. Well, we tried to play him out, out there, look. And he's absolutely <laughs> trying to do us under the keep net. <laughs> Come on, out. <laughs> trying to do this left-handed. I think we got him. No, we haven't. There he is. Oh, he's so tangled up. Got him. <sighs> Look what he's got us in. Oh, well, <laughs> it's a much better fish. It's exactly what I said. I don't want to get him in too quickly, but he did absolutely nothing. As you saw out in the river, and he's got right in the edge here, right in all the snags. <laughs> that is cracking we got him in the end the long landing at handle <laughs> right I'll change hook links after those shenanigans to get me in all this <laughs> foliage down here you can probably see I mean the, the edge of the river's right here so all this is covered that's in the water that's really what I was thinking I don't really don't want to get this fish in quickly when he was out there and he just did nothing, just plodded about. Well, this is turned out to be much better than I could possibly even imagine. <laughs> I'm still getting bites. It's chumblet, I think. Oh, that's a... Oh, it's just... I thought it was a roach for a minute. A little chumblet. What a session. Almost like a lucky dip in here as to what you get <laughs> next run through. <laughs> Well, that's run through again, strangely. Run right along the face of that, that snag. That's gone under. There we go. God, we're catching some fish. Blimey. A little bit perchy again. Went down into the sort of perch zone. <laughs> Seems to be further downstream. Very jag, 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 jag. Tits. No monster, but it's a lovely fish. God, now he's after the edge. Come on. Got us another cracker. Another absolute cracker. Nowhere near as big as that biggest one, but uh, still, lovely fish. God, where's that? 
lovely perch this morning. Well, as well at the chub, of course, but well, absolute live wire this one. We won't hold him up for long, but again, we got him over the net, so cracking. <laughs> I can't believe this. Bit of a dip. It does dip under sometimes along there. I do wonder if it is just catching on some of the branches from that tree, just riding over them. Could well be fish. It's a bite. There we go. Oh, and again, look. Another decent fish. Again, feels quite perchy. That's not quite as big as previous ones we've had. Yeah, nowhere near. Fooled me. Still, another lovely perch. Should have put the net under that one, I think. <laughs> Well, that'll possibly not do the swim any good. One way to find out. Of course, the fishing era. Quite used to all the boats. But it don't mean that they won't just scoot off back under that tree. Never mind, whatever happens. It's been awesome, absolutely awesome. Well, that seemed to have bothered that, whatever it was, a little chub, I think. <laughs> was it a little roach? No, nope, little chub. No, it's the pattern emerging though. If we get a bite at the top end, of the snag, the start of the snag, it tends to be little chub. About a third of the way down, it's bigger chub. Halfway down, it tends to be roach. And beyond halfway down, it's been perch. It's been very noticeable this morning. We're just in the sort of better chub zone at the moment. this roach cheers cool the crack it roach as well look <laughs> no monster but that's a that's a nice roach absolutely wonderful so guys that sun is making filming very tricky hopefully that's a bit better but it might be worse <laughs> well hopefully you can see what's going on I don't think you can give it too much longer now. Been a cracking couple of hours. It's about 10 o'clock. It's gone a bit quiet on the big fish front since those boats went through. I think maybe they've just pushed the fish back under. But I think it'll probably be like that from now on. I think it will just be a case of working to get the fish to come out. They'll come out possibly or possibly not in this clear river. And then another boat will come by and push them back under again. Oh, how have I missed that? That was a lovely bite. Just slowly sank away. He's had both my maggots up. Ugh. How has that happened? 
how has that happened? <laughs> oh dear. Very few smaller fish today. Definitely, definitely seems to have been that coloured water just gave them the, the bravery to come out. So we know to come and fish here in the future when it's, uh, when it's clear. Bites have uh, dried up quite a lot. This one. Oh, not that off. Always a way to get a bite is turn to you and say, bites have dried up. <laughs> but I'm not having many bites, to be honest. Not like I was. That's a bit short. I'm having to punch this a bit more now. As you can see, there's some ripple. And the wind's blowing right to left. I'm going to punch this uh, float a little bit more. It's becoming harder to see. But I'm not going to give it too much longer now anyway. Just a bit of a dawn raid. Well, it wasn't dawn, was it? But <laughs> wish I had come out of dawn. <laughs> not had anything put a real bend in this rod. But it is a power float rod, you know, and I've bought it for stopping chub getting into snags like that, but not a single one of them has tried to get back in there, bizarrely. You'd think as soon as you walk them, they'd want to get back under there, but they haven't at all. Gone through again there, look, without a bite. But it's certainly noticeably less bites coming since this sun's got up and got round the the trees opposite got on the water. Fish do seem that they don't want to get out any more into the into the river. I've put a foot and a bit of depth, extra depth on the rig as well. Just in case the fish have dropped down in the water. But uh, it's not really made much odds to be honest. So guys, another five minute catapult mend. This is my heavy duty one as well. Right, we'll give it another 10 minutes, I think. But uh, as you can see, it's very sunny. The bites have dried up, relatively speaking. That wind just has eased off a little bit just for a few minutes, so. Maybe we can winkle another bonus fish out before we get off. Such a different session to last time here. Many, many, many small fish the first time we fished here. And one slightly larger chub, about pound and a half, two pound. This time, lots more bigger fish. And hardly any small fish. We were getting a bite about every 10 seconds last time we were here. The float was just doing that all the way down the swim. Like I say, it's the, I'm sure it's the clear water. Oh, oh, this feels a bit better. I'm sure it's the clear water that's helped. Now oh, what's this? This is nodding away, feeling quite perchy. Come on, come on. Doesn't feel massive. It's now trying to do us in the edge. So is it a chub? No, it is a bird. I thought it felt perchy. Oh, what a catch of perch we've had today. Well, there we go. Another lovely, lovely Avon perch. Well, perhaps we won't go home just yet. It's about quarter to 11. We've had two and a half hours at it of which I've spent about 15 minutes mending the catapult. <laughs> so, so we haven't actually fished that much. <laughs> Another tiddler fiddler coming. Give us a chance to get sorted out. Hopefully they'll be gone past by the time we're sorted. 
and with the winter coming we'll have less of this to annoy us although to be fair people like that who obey the speed limit and don't have any problem with them at all considerate <laughs> dogs asleep yeah I don't have any any trouble with people like that at all just pootling along it's the people who use it as a racetrack that uh, drives you up the wall right I'm going to call it a day at that it's gone very quiet now but uh, certainly can't complain about the catch we've had today it's been absolutely fantastic really really couldn't have imagined we'd have caught like that like we have but yeah I'm going to call it a day now right we've got them in the keeping up we can have a look what we've caught can't we well guys I've just got the, uh, the net out that's what we've had today cracking net of fish absolutely cracking well, we'll have a look at a few of them before we put them back i think that's probably the biggest chub absolutely cracking many chub we've had one decent size ones one two three four five five decent chub and four decent perch but uh you know how's about that for a brace of a brace of perch this morning absolutely wonderful i think those are the two best ones but yeah what a what a catch that's been absolutely epic catch this morning so what a session that was absolutely fantastic what a catch we had oh it was wonderful less than three hours less than three hours down here but yeah i'm uh not massively surprised at the chub but it was good to catch them but uh the perch yeah a bit of a surprise i know there's a, they're around here but didn't really think we'd catch them fishing through the water but absolutely fantastic and but I used the keep net today, which I don't normally use, but I used it purely to stop the fish that I was catching spooking. Their, uh, their brethren down there, Perch and Chub, are quite renowned, aren't they, for, for spooking the other fish in the shoal. So I didn't want to put them straight back, hence using the keep net. I'm not a great fan of using keep nets. I don't see the point generally in my sort of fishing. Next time I'm out, I'm planning on coming out midweek uh, down here again to do a predator session. I'm going to be a little bit further upstream. But yeah, predator session planned. Hopefully catch some Xander. Hopefully catch some of those nice perch and maybe even some pike as well. Fingers crossed. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Tight lines, enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support. And I'll see you all again very soon when, <laughs> when I'll go somewhere where there aren't so many flies. <laughs>